Hey everybody. Today I am going to be following up on our first video, which was focusing on building out the navigation. And now what we're going to go through the the process we're going to go through today is building that into a canvas component. So one, not only is it a great benefit to learn how to standardize something like this and go through the process of picking different pieces from your app uh, that you can simplify and reuse. Uh, but also we'll start talking about the ins and outs of Canvas components. So the first thing here is you can see we uh, just added a few different things to our app. Uh, we added a simple logo uh, and a basic label uh, or just header time management. And what we're going to go through today, uh, like I said, is bringing that into a Canvas component and then copying that to each of our screens. So in case you do not have the components, uh, you can go to File, go to Settings, Advanced Settings. And if you scroll down, you will see Components right here. So make sure that this is on. And then once you come back, you should see it right here in the tree view next to Screens. So now in the tree view, uh, let's go ahead and create our first component. And we will call this one side nav. And so when you create a component, uh, it takes in much more static values for the basic design of it. So you can see here we can fill out the size, width, and height, and the general fill. Uh, as well, the customization capabilities, um, these are just some basic properties we can adjust with them. And then once we get into it, I'll show you actually the custom properties that we will make. So if we want this component to fit in our screen, we'll need to adjust it to represent the size of where we want it to sit. So in this case, uh, the side navigation here, we have the backdrop uh, rectangle. We can copy the 263 and 768 as the size of our component. And now you can see this has the tall structure like we had. So it's easy enough, thankfully, uh, just like we can copy and paste content from one screen into a different screen. Uh, I'm going to hit Control A, or you could shift click all of these individually as well, but I'll hit Control C. I'll go into the components and Control V. And so just as we're able to take in the dynamic global variable menu navigation here, uh, we can still create and rather pass through this information into our component, but we do have to set that up explicitly. So if we look at our component and come back to that custom properties, this is where we're going to start passing in different parameters for our Canvas component to read and use for the UI. So I'll go ahead and create a new one. And this first one is going to be called menu data. And the display name and name are just the basic references for this. Uh, I could actually put a space there, and you can see that this is more the internal name uh, with the description. Table that contains menu navigation links. And so here under property type is where we can start to see how we can change this to either be an input, what is data that's coming into it from the Canvas app, or output, what can we actually bring back out into the app uh, for other components to rely on. In this case, we just want this to be an input, and now we can choose the data type. So we have a wide range here, uh, all the standard schema that, uh, for the most part at least, that we have in Power Apps and Canvas apps in particular. And so what we want this to be is actually a table. And the reuse onset, uh, if we were passing this more dynamically from other values, we would want this checked. For the R case, we don't need this checked right now. So I'll go ahead and create. And so when we create these input properties, especially how the app starts to understand how to read it um, is by giving it a example schema of what you are eventually going to pass into it from the canvas. So with the side nav here, now I can go and look at menu data. And this is where you can see that example schema I was talking about. 
And so I'll go back over to screens and I'll go back uh, to look at my global, uh, rather the collection that I made menu navigation uh, here in the OnStart. And so we have the label, screen, and ref. And so what we'll do is we can just take a copy of this. Again, control C, go back to our component. And let's just replace this existing one with that. And so you can see the text fields. It picks up easy enough. The screen is where we have uh, the first little quirk of the Canvas components. And that is because we don't have a way to reference a screen from the formula bar in and of itself. Uh, so what we can do is actually use a workaround uh, by creating another example, another custom property that actually represents our screen. So I opened up new custom. I'll say screen reference. And so uh, property type will keep the same, though we could probably change it. Uh, but I'll change this one, the data type now to screen. And I'll create. And so here in the screen, what I can do is actually change this to side nav dot screen ref. And now it's understanding that this is actually a screen. And I can validate that by now updating my gallery. Uh, so rather than pointing at menu navigation, I'll point this at side nav menu data. And that's where you can see my home page I edit. Uh, is coming from the table reference I gave it here. So now I can actually come back, go to my screens. And so here through the insert tab is now the custom get grouping. I'll see side nav up here. And I'll go ahead and enter. That had disappeared, but I can put that over here just for reference. And we can see, thankfully, because I copied uh, the buttons here, I already had the existing dynamicism built into the bill. So this formula is still driving through the component uh, whether or not this is the main item. But we need to actually update this. So uh, the side nav, uh, once we embed it into the canvas, uh, we still have the ability to look at those properties since they are inputs. So menu data. And you can see it brings through the example data, but we're going to replace this with menu navigation. And now you can see the home page, time entries, project view. What I can do here is now copy this to all the other screens. And now you can see that that's on each different screen and the function uh, that's running the buttons fill uh, is updating accordingly. Now where the real value of this comes in is let's say the time management, uh, maybe I wanted to change the label of that. If I was to do this just normally through uh, the just collection of components I created, if I change, let's say the background of that, then I'd have to go here, change each of these, and maybe accidentally I change the label for this to be time management. I'd either have to copy all of these over each time or just keep track, and you can see that the chaos just continues. However, with my component example, if I go back to my component, and here for the rectangle, I change that to the blue fill. And if I want to change the label, I can come back to the screens, and you can see that that automatically changes. And going to each one, you can see that that kept the reference for all single one. Now we have the ability to keep this updating every single time and reduce the headaches.